In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to all of you by the miracles of technology. This is certainly a very strange time that we find ourselves uh, certainly dealing with the coronavirus, but also attempting to bring the beautiful mysteries of our God to each of you through this recorded Mass. It is a joy to be able to gather together, whether we are praying here at St. Anne's or praying at home, but we are indeed praying together. So as we come before the Lord now, let us begin by acknowledging our sins, asking God's mercy and peace so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the youngest man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall, shall want. want. You spread the table before me in sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord 
for years to come. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them, for it is shameful not to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore I say, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? 
How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, you do not listen. Why do you, why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciple and we are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, this is what is so amazing that you do not know where he is from, yet open my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, you were born totally, you were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they drew him out. When Jesus heard that he had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered and said, who is he, sir? that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he, he said. I do believe, Lord, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you are saying, we see, so your sins remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For those of you watching, you can't see what I can see. Certainly what you see is probably somewhat normal because you are used to seeing me in church. But when I look out into the church, it's mostly empty and it's very awkward. We have two cameramen and you know what they say about cameras, that a camera adds 10 pounds. So if there are two cameras on me, you know that this is not doing me any favors at all. We've also got a few people sitting out there who are helping us pray at this Mass. And so, admittedly, it is strange, but you can't see what I can see. The Gospel this, this day, this Sunday, speaks a lot about sight and not being able to see. In these days of practicing social distancing, we come to worship our God, who is not concerned about being socially distant from us, but rather Jesus, the Son of God, chose to live among us. He came as one not contaminated with sin, to be among those who had sin, so that he could save us from our sin. Jesus wanted us to catch what he has, the very life of God. And I pray, and I trust that that is what we are all trying to catch in these days of Lent, the very life of God. In this gospel scene, we see Jesus doing something for a man who didn't even ask him to do something for him. The man born blind did not ask Jesus to heal him, but rather Jesus in his love, and in his mercy, took the initiative to give that man sight. He did it in a way that seems rather awkward and unpleasant. Think about it. Jesus spat on the ground and made clay with the dirt. So essentially, it was mud. Jesus put mud made from the saliva and the dirt into the man's eyes. And his sight was restored. These days can be unpleasant for us. Jesus did not give us the coronavirus. He is the one, not, not the one telling us to remain in our homes, although I bet he would because that is very good advice. 
However, he can use this rather challenging, unpleasant situation to help us to see the things that are most important. Maybe to pray together as a family. To spend more time as family. One of the great blessings of these days is I've been able to spend a lot more time outside with the weather being so pleasant, and I'm seeing a lot of people enjoying each other's company outside. We can grow in deeper appreciation of that which is most important to us. So that which can be experienced as unpleasant, Jesus can use to help us see that which is of greater value. And so today, as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us pray certainly that we might be a people who see what the truth is, the truth who is Jesus Christ, and be able to share that truth with others. But also let us pray that as we struggle ongoingly with this coronavirus, that we might be able to see the way to find healing and restore right order to our lives so that things can be brought back to normal. Certainly we pray for all of those who have been afflicted, all of those who are providing care and comfort, and we pray today that there will be healing soon. And so let us pray that we might be a people who see that God is not distant from us, especially in these days, but rather he is drawing us closer to him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life to the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our loving God, we now turn to him, offering our prayers. For the church, may God help us to remain faithful to all his commandments and grow in the fullness of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may the Lord grant them the fortitude to remain true to his justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, and especially those who suffer from the coronavirus, May the healing power of Jesus come upon them and bring them comfort and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may the Holy Spirit increase in us a spirit of conversion and openness to his works in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they through the mercy of God, rest in the fullness of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, 
We give you thanks and praise for all your gifts. We ask you now to hear these prayers as we offer them to you through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you, as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For... This is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us uh, by watching us through the internet. Uh, it really is a pleasure to be able to share Mass with you, even though we are somewhat physically distant, but not spiritually distant. I invite you all to share uh, in the Rosary on Sunday, uh, March 22nd. That's this Sunday. Uh, if you're watching this on Saturday, that's tomorrow. If you're watching this on Sunday, that's today, at 4 p.m., Bishop de Cunha is inviting all the Catholics of our diocese to join in the rosary, and you can join him live on the diocesan website or the diocesan Facebook page, and hopefully we'll be able to join together in prayer. Who knows how long this is going to last? We pray that it is not very long, but no matter how long it is, we know that we are not distant from one another, nor are we distant from God, and God certainly is not distant from us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head for God's blessing. Look upon those who, look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.